All right, we're back from our Matahari, and I'm so excited to share this game with all of you. So we have been to the Ball des Artistes, and we got Gabriel Astruc, who is the impresario manager in Paris, to give us his card. And the Samsonite dude disappeared, and well, I guess we're basically done with the ball because we have his card. So we'll go onto the streets. Matahari, uh, <gasps> wait a moment. Wait a minute, what? Monsieur Samsonet. You were wonderful tonight. Yes, but it was hard work and I'm very tired. Pardon me, but I have a lot to think about. Yes, you do. More than you imagine. Meaning? A businessman needs to look ahead. Helps with investments, you know. I'm something of a fortune teller. Want to hear your fate? You're very peculiar. As of tonight, my fate is in my own hands. Thank you. Is it? Allow me to show you your future. You dance, but not too often. Astruc won't let you wear out your welcome. Money is short, younger dancers imitate you and then surpass you. Your glorious beauty fades. Men no longer compete to support you. You end up on the street destitute. How unkind. Why are you tormenting me tonight of all nights? What does it matter? Your story means nothing. While you dance, the nations of Europe go for war. And they are all as foolish as you. Because, like you, they all think they can win. So, no hope for anyone. Well, sorry to disappoint you, sir, but I'm an optimist. As am I. Here's a different future, filled with hope. You join my little band of traders in state secrets. You also dance. Money flows freely. You get rich. Together, by trading information back and forth, we show Europe that war is impossible. Did I hear that right? You're asking me to become a spy. For the greater good of humanity. Helen of Troy started a war, but I doubt I could stop one. Not by yourself, and not all at once. This is ridiculous. What would I do? Poison the Kaiser? I had something less criminal in mind. Go back inside the party, seduce that fellow Zollinger, and bring me an impression of his cigar. My knowledge of anatomy must be incomplete. I never heard of a man's cigar. <laughs> it's a small metal stamp. Zollinger's corporate seal. It's worth 5,000 francs. Easy money for someone with uh, your unique abilities. 5,000 francs? But Zollinger has a mistress. We'll change that. Here's a love note for Mamzer. See how she reacts to my plea. Oh dear. Oh, the drama. And what happens when my glorious beauty fades? This career lasts a lifetime. Talk to Frau Schragmuller if you get confused. <gasps> Schragmuller? She works for you. Who would ever guess? What am I doing? Somehow I must seduce Rupert Zollinger, a man I hardly know, and take an impression of his corporate seal. At least he's good looking. <laughs> I like that she um, accepted becoming a spy very easily. Hello, Schlagmüller. I like her clothes, actually. Hello again. Well, I see you've joined the team. Oscar had his eye on you from the beginning. What a strange fellow. How well do you know him? He's elusive, but he pays well. Just remember, now you're in, you're in. There's no way out short of death. What a comforting thought. You're a woman. What does he want me for? Isn't it obvious? I have some skills, but sadly, flirtation is not among them. Good luck. In the theater, we say, break a leg. All right. Let me know if you need help with a splint. <laughs> Alienate Zollinger and Ruder seduce Zollinger. So now we know we're a spy, so we will um, build our skills later. Wealth is obviously money. Skill and spycraft, I don't really remember how you do them, but okay. Let's go and give her this first. 
Hello, madame. I found this thing for you. Here's a note a gentleman handed me. My heart is yours to take or trample. This is very touching. Who sent it? What's his name? I really don't know. Is he handsome? Why doesn't he introduce himself directly? He's very mysterious. And Herr Zollinger is in the room, watching your every move. Ugh, of course. Rupert. <laughs> Let's have some fun. I'll write a reply. But no, wait. I need a pen. I will go ask someone for a pen, I guess. Oh, I can't talk to her anymore. <laughs> or her husband. Alright. Maybe I shouldn't ask Rupert about a pen? I don't know. Oh, here's the journalist. Hello. You must have a pen. Maybe? Kinda, right? Hello again. Evening. I need a pen. Can you help me? Anything for you, Mata. Oh, I thank you. She has to go around the pillars. Here we go. Here's what you need to arrange a tryst. I count the hours to a rendezvous. Promise not to be dull and responsible. <laughs> Whoopsie. That doesn't sound very loyal. If Rupert paid more attention, I'd be more loyal. Ha. <laughs> ah, she is a nice woman, isn't she? Hey, I found this. Herr Zollinger, I feel honor bound to show you. Isn't this Mademoiselle Royer's handwriting? I count the hours. Oh, does she now? Why do I waste my money on that wicked woman? Without a thought, she flirts with everyone in sight. Maybe. What happened? Wait, what? Uh, Mata's first espionage target. I guess we go back to Danielle and talk to her or something. I just had a thought. What now? Mademoiselle Royer, a word to the wise, if I may. Be cautious about Herr Zollinger's intentions. About Rupert? His intentions? What do I care? Well, in talking to him just now, he casually mentioned that he thinks you're an expensive, brainless flirt. Oops. He does not. Was he making a joke? He wouldn't dare. And if he did, it's in terrible taste. And and that would be the last straw. That cad. He's belittled me for the last time. Sorry to bring bad news. Uh, bring him some bad news. Tell that idiot he's an idiot. Okay. The drama. Hey. Um, you're an idiot. Curtsy, Danielle, me. who now disappeared ah, from the balcony. It's our dancer. Look at the matron. She has no body. Mademoiselle Royer wishes me to convey her most cordial scorn for your cruel ways. Is that so? Her exact words were, tell that idiot he's an idiot. That brainless little minx. To hell with her. I'm very sorry your romance has turned out so badly. No, no. It's a relief. Many thanks for ridding me of that troublesome creature. Oh? I appreciate your gratitude, but I can't help wondering. <laughs> do your feelings end with gratitude or, well, go further? How strikingly forward of you, Mademoiselle Matahari. Oops. Now it's my turn to wonder. Could you possibly be attempting to seduce me? You decide. An obvious man of the world like you must know that seduction is an art and has its rules. Rules? I'm intrigued. <laughs> oh dear. 
Oh. Would you like to hear more about the rules of seduction? But of course. Unless there aren't 400 of these things, are there? I'm not a patient man. I don't pretend to know all the rules. I only use four to fit the four basic types of men. Only four? Such a small number. Does Herr Dr. Freud know? <laughs> okay. Seduction by flattering, seduction by yielding, seduction by dismissing, seduction by daring. So we will be able to use these in the future. A daring approach is to take charge, reverse roles and break the man to your will. Very effective with an insecure man who is also a bit of a brute, but a gentleman may be put off. I can see how a headstrong woman like yourself might find that role appealing. Some women like to feign ennui and dismiss a man. A man who is very confident or arrogant will rise to the challenge. Otherwise, one must entice him a bit first, then back away. So, that's how women think. And I assumed that they were so sincere. One technique is to play the part of the poor, helpless girl. It can draw a shy man out of his shell, but it can be dangerous if he is a natural brute, particularly if he is insecure and needs to prove himself. Men like that can be dangerous, it's true, but sometimes they're useful. The simplest technique is to flatter the man, but it only works on men who are gentlemen enough not to take advantage of a lady, and yet who are unsure of themselves. He's not much of a man if he doesn't believe in his own worth. But consider my case. What approach would you use with me if I deigned to take an interest in you? With such an intelligent man as yourself, only direct honesty will serve. You're too smart to fall for any tricks. How true. Those simple boys <laughs> seem like children's toys. Oh yes. For instance, you're far too wise and virile to fall for abject flattery. Quite. You are certainly <laughs> a fascinating so woman. Here, for saving me from romantic disaster, a trinket I had foolishly bought for Danielle. Oh. And could I interest you in a late night drink in my hotel room? Lead on, Rupert. <gasps> You're dozing, Rupert. Am I boring you, or just too much champagne? Too much exercise, I think. <gasps> Don't look! No, I'm just kidding. Alright, so we are in Rupert's home now, so what we can do is... Maybe I can make Rupert more comfortable. Uh, we can uh, find like collectibles at different scenes. Uh, I actually only found one last time I played it, so it's hard. This may be just the tonic I need. Now he's asleep, but he looks restless. Give him a pillow, maybe? With two in a bed, sometimes it's hard to sleep. Here, try this. Comfy now? Hmm, how thoughtful. That's better. Hmm. Hmm. <gasps> He's asleep! Alright, let's check around here. Well, look. Here's a useful tool. Oh dear lord, the underwear. Um, I know the sigil is there. I just wanna I need to check out everything here. There's an open window. The night air is cool and a little too breezy. There. No more night breezes. Alright. Matter. Where are you? Come back to bed. Right here. Here 
Here, take this whiskey. How about a little nightcap to celebrate our evening together? Hmm, that's good. Here's to us. Good night. Yes, good night, dear. There's a closed window. We can go look at that, I guess. Ooh, a plant. It's closed now. Yes, good. I guess. Uh, here's a cigar lighter. I don't know what we, what we need that for, but... We need it. Aha! Uh -huh. A source of heat. Okay, soap. This might be useful. I don't remember what we we're gonna use all this for, but oh, make an. I can't just take this. Rupert will know who did it. He'll come after me. Ah, uh, yes. Somewhere, was it Monsieur Samsonet or a cheap novel? I learned that spies leave no traces. That is true. Make an impression of the sigil. Okay, well we have soap. This would work on wax, but soap is harder. I can't see an impression. Okay, you can't combine items. This should heat things up. Hot sigil. Yeah, look at that. Impression and soap. Well now, that did the job. A perfect impression. And I will make a perfect impression on Monsieur Samsonet. Tonight, just as I thought my dance career was assured, I met a strange gentleman who made me think hard about the future, and I became a spy instead. God help me. That was the end of chapter one. Shall we continue? Three years pass. What about Mata? Her career? And this espionage business, did that really happen? Oh, yes. She danced, her daring made her famous. And she spied, no one suspected. You're shocked, but she never cared what other people thought. It's been three years since I met that man, Samsonet. Is that his real name? And the world has changed. As he predicted, I dance, but not often. Now and then he gives me some small task, but so far, nothing important. I can't complain. The money is good. Looking back, meeting him almost seems like a dream. Chapter 2, Secret Papers. Alright, let's save. Let's make a uh, Woodfire 2. Word fire two. There we go. All right. So I'm not sure exactly where we are, but we, I guess we might be in Paris or not. There's another plant. I guess we'll go to the street. <laughs> Come in. Bonjour, madame. Pardon me. I, I know I'm intruding. Did I get the room right? You are Matahari, the dancer, yes? What can I do for you, madame? I'm not sure. I've read about you. You're an independent woman. A woman who succeeds by her wits. I admire that. It's rare in a world made for men. And, well, I need some advice. One independent woman to another? Yes. I too am battling the... Narrow-minded society, narrow-minded men have created for us. Do you hate men? Not at all. My husband, bless his soul, was killed by an automobile. Now, after many months, I... I am no longer in mourning. I see. You met a man and you like him. Good for you. But you don't know how to approach him, how to get him to notice you. You have it. That's exactly my problem. You need to understand seduction, my dear. That's all. Tell me, what sort of man is he? A gentleman or a brute? He's a scientist. Educated, but not refined. 
He is very patient. Gentlemen, then, broadly speaking, is he confident or insecure? He's brilliant but shy. He avoids looking at me, but sometimes... Insecure, then? Well, there is only one path to success. If you want him, you must flatter him. Everything he does is wonderful. You're fascinated by his charm, his knowledge, his ideas. That's all very well for you, but I'm not pretty, and I'm not young, and... Don't worry. You're a woman. Behave like one. When he offers you a cigarette, take it. Ask for a light. Move around in your chair when you're with him. Signal your intentions, and in his eyes, you will be beautiful. You think so? I'm quite sure. Ah, merci beaucoup. Wait, you still haven't told me your name. Yes, I suppose I should. <gasps> I'm Madame Curie. Marie Curie, oh the renowned gosh. chemist. Yes, and no one must find out I came to see you. Oops. It will be our womanly secret. Your ideas. I will try them. They'll make a fine experiment in human chemistry. True. <gasps> that was Marie Curie. What? All right, let's go out to the street then. Oh, it's Paris with them um, arrondissement. Wait, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. With, with, down. Yeah. All right, let's see what we can do here. We can. Oh, there's Els Elsbeth Schragmüller. We probably want to talk to her. We can go back to the hotel. We can not talk to him. Here's a theater. Matahari. Well, that almost looks like Danielle. We can talk. Or we can take a taxi. If you if you need to go anywhere in Paris. Here's a mysterious man. Okay, so we can't do much to talk to Schragmüller. Schragmüller. Let's do that. Bonjour, Elspeth. Mata, there you are. I've been looking everywhere. Oscar wants to see you. Tell him to meet me at Giroux. I'm off to lunch. Not here. Not in Paris. What's the matter? What's wrong? Nothing. Oscar is uncomfortable in Paris. He feels exposed. He prefers Monte Carlo. It's neutral territory. Take the train. Take the train. Very well. I understand. And Mata, be careful. The journey will be dangerous. Foreign agents will be on the prowl. If they corner you, you'll have to start again. Basically, she just explained the minigame. Let's go taxi. Monte Carlo? No. Taxi? Where to, madame? No. Gare du Nord, please. Gare du Nord is the service, train madame. station. Oh, we're on the train station at least in Paris. See, sometimes you can talk to people at the train station. Or touch things at the train station. Doesn't seem like there's anything here. So, let's see. We might have time to take the train, or we might not. Actually... We still have Zollinger's bracelet from three years ago. What? Interesting. To say the least. Uh, hmm. See, if we go to Monte Carlo, he might talk to us. Blah, blah, blah. No, okay. Um, we will take a break right here. And we'll go to Monte Carlo next time in the next episode. So more drama and stuff in this episode we are now a spy and we are gonna go to Monte Carlo next time and do some more spy work maybe get some instructions at least so we are playing Mata Hari thank you all so much for watching hope you will enjoy the game and I will see you all later